e-bikes are great fun. They've opened up an exciting new freedom for many and they're now more accessible than ever. When I first started my e-bike journey, everything was about DIY e-bikes. Buying an off-the-shelf e-bike was really expensive, so thankfully today, they're now more affordable. However, I do feel like some factory e-bikes lack range and power, and this can really impact on your adventures. So today, we're gonna to be modifying this Engway M20. More range, more power. So I do really like the M20. It's a fantastic e-bike. It's just so capable because you've got dual suspension. It's got a nice look about it. It's got decent lights on it. And it's just a great little kind of town hopper for just bobbing around and avoiding loads of traffic. But the range really sucks on this model. This battery just seems to deplete really, really fast. I don't know if it's something to do with the display. The reading on the battery just doesn't kind of match up with the actual voltage of it. So it gives the impression that it's depleting quicker. But I don't think so because it just seems to have like very little range. But that being said, I don't think it's actually a very big battery anyway. Yeah, it's only a 13 amp hour battery, so it's not very big at all. So that is why we're gonna fit one of these bad boys. This is absolutely huge, 30 amp hour, and it's slightly higher voltage as well. And we'll come onto that in a minute, because this bike should be able to handle that, no problem. But just look at the size of this. This is, this is a beefcake. This is gonna give you so much range, more than double the range of this, and it, it will be more as well, because the voltage is a little bit higher. So so that's what we're going to stick on this bike here and yeah we're gonna have to make some mods <laughs> so with the battery removed what we need to do is get this battery holder off um, because what we need to do is access these wires so that we can actually connect this battery up to the main power it's literally two wires but anyway we need to get this off first so let's just start by doing that just three screws so just leave that middle one in there just to just to hold it for now um, and I'm, what I want to do is get into this main box here so I can basically get access to the to the wires inside so let's undo these now once this is done you can sort of slide this up so we're going to just undo this screw now so you can see once the cover comes off you've got these two wires here the red and the black that's what we're interested in so we're just going to remove this completely the best way to do that get some snips just cut this funky connector off now on the battery end we've got an xt90 connector so what we need is the opposite version of that so you can get these on amazon just come with the wires pre-connected and then you've basically just got kind of bare wires and don't connect this to the to the battery um, until these are terminated properly because otherwise you could you could end up with a problem so what we need to do now is attach this to here and to do that what i'm going to use are these wago connectors now i've not tried this before in this particular setup so this is going to be a bit of a first time test for me um, but i think they should work because these can handle about 30 to 40 amps believe it or not but if you're not seeing these before these are super easy to use you just basically pull up the levers either side you can just put a wire in each end and then just literally snap it shut super easy to make connections whether they handle it is another thing but i'm going to give it a go so with these little connectors they've got like a little kind of diagram on the side that says how much wire you have to strip so it's like 11 mil it's, it's so cool these are so cool these things i use them for everything these days um but yeah so basically strip the wire back to like 11 uh, mil there and what i've had to do with this one because the wire's a bit thick so maybe if you're going to do this get slightly see if you can get slightly thinner cables so yeah it's just as simple as that so you just basically put that in that hole and then click it shut and when you do this it's really important not to have any like wispy wires around the outside of that if the wires you know um, are hanging out of the sides that's not going to be good because obviously these two, if these two touch you're going to get sparks and all sorts so yeah make sure you do that and it might be worth putting some insulation tape around um, these as well just to, just for security but I think we should be able to push these into the frame once it's done um, but I'm going to test these first anyway to see how well they work and um, yeah so we've got to do now is the other side so you can see on the other side here these wires are a lot thinner um, so these go in you know actually a lot better than this other cable i've actually pushed them in with a bit of force so basically they sort of mate on the other side you can sort of see the the two sides touching that'll help the connection there so with that done that is it you basically all you've got to do now is just connect connect the battery so i'm going to do that before i put the battery on the frame just to test it all kind of works okay so to avoid like a spark or a snap make sure the battery's turned off that's the cool thing about this battery is it actually has an on off switch here so make sure that's off and then you can connect this without having any sort of you know spark or anything like that so that's connected now no dramas and now we can turn on the battery so battery's on and now we can test the bike make sure it turns on okay 
um, by holding the button down there and it is turning on fine. Now, as I say, a lot of these controllers can handle a little bit more voltage. So if the bike comes with a 48 volt battery, normally you can run it on 52. Now, it might be good idea to test. I'm testing it on this one. You know this one's kind of looking like it's working at the moment. Now, if you go into the settings here, by holding those two buttons down the bottom, you can see the first setting is 48. Some of these bikes actually have a 60 volt setting. So I want to see if that's possible. Um, it doesn't look like it. It looks like this one has 48, but 48 to 52, I, I think will be fine. So as I say, we're going to test that out in this video and we'll see if it blows up. <laughs> if we do a quick blip on the throttle, it's working, so that's all good. So just looking at where to mount this battery, I would have said probably the best place for this battery to be mounted would be here, because you've got access points here for like cable ties to sort of strap this on. The ones that come in the kit are super industrial. They're not just like rubbish cable ties, they're proper straps. So that's really gonna help. But yeah, having it down here, I think is, is good because it's kind of just gonna sit there on its own anyway. If you were to hang it from the top, it might look better up there, but I think you're gonna to struggle to kind of secure it. So I think here is probably a good place to have it. Obviously we can make it really neat as well because the cable can run behind here and that little hole under there is where the um, the wires can kind of push in so let's get that done then right so I've done a few straps just to hold it on and that is looking pretty secure obviously I've left this out because I just want to test these connectors make sure they're not gonna kind of you know melt or anything like that so yeah we're good to give it a try now okay so I've done a few runs up this hill backwards and forwards um, just to see if these are getting warm and they're not at all so I think we're good to use these. Ultimately, the max power on this bike is about a thousand watts. So realistically, that's only going to be like 20 amps at like 50 volts or something like that. So, so I think we're absolutely fine on that. What I will do just for safety is just wrap these individually in insulation tape and then tuck them into the frame. And then I think we're good to go, guys. So let's go back and sort that out. Right, all done. So I've given the battery a little bit of a charge. So it's got this really cool battery display here. You just push that button and it shows you. So we're on 81%. So I'm gonna take it for a little spin down the town, um, grab some lunch, and then we'll see what it, um, what it reads after. So, in the town, we've done 1.9 kilometers. Might be a little bit more because I've reset that kind of on the journey, but we have got 78%, so it's gone down a few percent. I was going pretty quickly and there was a few hills as well. Okay, back at home now. Let's see what the battery's reading. So the battery is reading 76%, so it's gone down another couple of percent. So that's gonna be a lot of trips to the town. I think I'll take it for a little run around the park now. Right, back home again, We've done 10.1 kilometers and the battery has gone down to 68%. So you get the idea guys, this is 
it's gonna have loads of range. So a quick note about the charger that comes with this. This is sort of one of the higher quality chargers that you generally get with these kits. It's got a built-in fan. It's actually got a different power plug as well, so you can't mistake this and plug it into the wrong battery. Because most e-bike chargers and e-scooter chargers use like a little barrel connector. So obviously this one is you're less likely to sort of make a mistake and then potentially cause yourself a problem. There's obviously a lot of kind of talk about issues and fires and stuff with e-bikes at the moment, but but in general you shouldn't have a problem if you're using high quality stuff like this. That being said, e-bike batteries should be treated with respect. They're basically like a fuel source at the end of the day, so charging them inside overnight is generally not a good idea. Um, I don't charge anything overnight other than, you know, smartphones. And even that is probably not the best idea. You probably really shouldn't charge anything overnight if you really want to be want to be um, careful. So to sum up then, this battery is an absolute beast. As well as giving you some extra power, it just increases the range of your e-bike massively. The number of times I've went to grab the e-bike and realized that it wasn't charged or it didn't have enough energy in the battery to actually get where I wanted to get, it just becomes a bit annoying after a while. But with this battery, you can leave it a lot longer between charges and it's just really convenient being able to sort of do multiple trips to the town without having to, you know, have to charge each time you do a journey. So the battery I have here is on the Kirby Bike website. So if you hit battery at the top here, you come down and basically it's this one here for 596 pounds. So this one here, 52 volts, 30 amp hour. Now, as you saw, I tried it out on my Engway M20 and it worked absolutely fine. I've done this with a few different bikes and you can use the extra voltage, no problem at all. But if you are gonna do this, it might be a good idea to double check that the bike can handle the voltage first. You can see here, the M20 works, no problem. So if you have one of those, I'd be pretty confident that it would work. Obviously, removing the battery mount on the bike and snipping that connector off is gonna avoid the warranty. There's not really any way around that. But for the most part, most things on an e-bike are actually quite reliable and you can always pick up spare parts pretty cheaply if you need to. So guys, that's it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's provided you with some useful information for getting more out of your e-bike. In the next video, we're actually gonna go one step further and we're gonna install a high power motor and battery to this bike to really make it shift. So stay tuned for that one. Meanwhile, happy e-biking and I'll catch you next time.